So when I hire people for a job, I don't ask them what they would do, I ask them what they've done. And the things that I have done are, you know, first of all, I've been raised in my district. I've lived here almost my whole life, except when I was stationed elsewhere in the military. Um, I did three tours in Afghanistan as a helicopter pilot. I've been in ground combat. I was shot down and had to engage the enemy in ground combat to protect my patients as a medevac pilot. Um, and that put me in a unique position to advocate for opening combat jobs up for women. Um, we had a policy called the Ground Combat Exclusion Policy, which um, wouldn't allow women to apply for positions that had the high likelihood of engaging in ground combat, and it was really hurting the military. Um, and I could see how it was tying the hands of the commanders in the field. The Joint Chiefs of Staff agreed with me. Um, I asked the Secretary of Defense to repeal the policy through a lawsuit, um, and uh, with, with the Joint Chiefs on my side, he um, acquiesced and rescinded the policy. But then Jeff Sessions announced that he was going to legislate the policy back into place. And so that began a four-year battle in D.C. where I uh, co-founded the Combat Integration Initiative and met with congressmen and women and senators and staffers and the Senate and House Armed Services Committee staffers on, on both sides of the, um, the aisle um, to you know, influence and try to prevent that legislation from happening. And we were successful, but throughout that process, my current congressman, who was John Carter, wouldn't meet with me. Um, and that kind of lit a spark in me. Um, but I think that we need to start electing people who have shown that they can gather bipartisan support, they can go to the conservative Pentagon and the, the liberal ACU and bring the left and right sides together for pragmatic, effective solutions that impact our country in a positive way. I think that not enough people focus on the economy. I think that that's going to be my number one issue. Now, that's kind of a broad issue. There's a lot of things that impact that. Um, I believe that Republican leadership, not necessarily Republican voters, but Republican leadership think that tackling the economy mean giving breaks to the top 1%. Um, so I'm going to be looking at actual pragmatic solutions for the people of my district where, you know, like I said, I, I grew up here and I remember um, the hard times that our district has fallen on throughout, you know, my life. Um, and I want to try to do something um, more for the people of this district than they're getting now. I think we deserve better representation. We, we deserve representation that is accessible to people, that listens to people, that takes meetings with constituents, not just donors, um, holds town halls, holds themselves accountable. Um, so I'm going to be looking at job creation. I think that we have a lot of potential. Um, I have been at bases all over the world and you know, the, the towns that, that host uh, military bases all face similar issues. And I think that we um, have a, a really rich opportunity to uh, broaden job creation around um, Fort Hood specifically, um, to provide a, an, you know, a couple of industries that can recruit people from Fort Hood so that when they come active, out of active duty, they, they stay here in the district because um, we have one of the highest veteran population house districts in the country. We're in the top 10. Um, we have more veterans in our district than in 97% of the rest of the country. And I'd like to keep it that way. I think that it, it makes us a safer community. It makes us a patriotic community. Um, we need to be a community that keeps our veterans here and we can only do that through job creation. Um, so another issue, you know, I spent um, five years in the healthcare industry. I spent two years in uh, Dell. Technologies um, in Round Rock, uh, you know, again for job creation, that's great. That Dell is here. I'm going to bring more companies like that to to uh, to District 31, but also to Bell County, not just Williamson County. Um, so, but definitely my second issue would be uh, national security and veterans issues. We need a combat veteran to represent this district. Combat veterans understand the cost of war. We don't take that lightly. We're not going to be, you know, trying to provoke a nuclear power because we understand the consequences that that can bring. However, we also understand that there are some things worth fighting for. So I'm not suggesting we just elect people who wouldn't go to war for anything. Um, I think it would be a sad day when we find that there's absolutely nothing that we think would be worth fighting for. Um, so a combat veteran can strike that balance of understanding the cost but also understanding that there are things worth fighting for. Um, and I guess uh, my third issue would really be to try to fix DC, and I, I say that um, with some hesitation because I know so many people have said it. Um, but again, when I'm hiring for a job, I want to I want to ask people what they've done, not what what they will do. And the things that I will do are the things that I've already done. We've got 
to elect people who are not afraid to stand up to leadership and not afraid to stand up to authority who aren't easily intimidated. I took on the Secretary of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff and I was able to influence them that you know they should take my side and they did. Um, so I absolutely think we need to start electing people who um, are effective at bringing together both sides so we can stop having government shutdowns every time we turn around. Um, and I think until we elect people who are willing to stand up to that kind of authority that we're going to have the same problems that we have now. I don't think we can talk about things in terms of just Democrat and Republican anymore. I think that that maybe four years ago could have could have been the conversation, um, but a, a, uh, an independent firm did a poll in this district and only a third of the district self-identifies as Republican, a third as Democrat, and a full third as independent. People are not happy on either side. Um, people in Texas specifically don't like to be labeled. We're independent. We don't like to be told that you can predict how we're going to act or vote. Um, and, and I don't know that this district is still heavily Republican. I think that um, we used to be a state of Ann Richards and LBJ. Um, there's, no, there's no fear of going back to having a Democrat um, represent this area, but I don't think a lot of the, the values of the people in this district have changed. I think the parties have changed. I think the Republican Party specifically has changed a lot. I used to be a Republican. I grew up Republican. I was taught that Republicans were patriotic. They had a monopoly on understanding foreign policy and national security. Um, they were fiscally conservative. Those things aren't true anymore. You know, we have a congressman who likes to pretend like he is the friend of military veterans, but he is consistently voting against military benefits. You know, he voted for a tax reform pack package that takes away the incentive for companies to hire disabled veterans. I utilized that incentive when I got hired on by Seton, which is a, a large healthcare family um, in, in Austin, the Austin area and out here to some extent. Um, and you know, you can't pretend to be the friend of a veteran population just because you vote to fund military technology. I was on the B2 program for two years, um, so I understand the importance of funding military technology, but I don't think you need to write your contractors blank checks just because they're also your donors.